Hey there, YouTube. All right. Intel Pentium G6400, 10th Gen Pentium, uh, one of the most powerful Pentiums on the planet, is back. So we're going to make another video with this because, you know, I didn't get the RTX 3080, so I've got to make more videos with the existing stuff I have, even if it is, uh, you know, this, this CPU. Now, this did not really perform as I had hoped. I thought, you know, we would see something out of this. Uh, I'd hoped for 8th Gen i3 performance, uh, 9th Gen i3 performance. No, it was, uh, it was pretty pathetic. So what we're going to do differently here is, guess what? Z490 motherboard, okay? This guy is going to hopefully take us to the next level. Now, right now it's got my uh, my i7-10700, which uh, is going to my son. This whole setup is uh, an upgrade for him, except for the RAM isn't shown. But uh, So I'm going to replace that CPU with this one because it's still mine. I haven't given it to him yet. We will have uh, 3600 megahertz in here. Remember from the B460 videos, this could only support 2666 megahertz. So we want to do something much better. All right. We'll have the Samsung 970 EVO, which is a, you know, really good M.2. And then we'll figure out what kind of graphics card to put in here. Uh, we will start with 3600 megahertz RAM, maybe go up to 4133. Now, the only other thing is what CPU cooler are we going to use? So part of me thinks, you know, this thing is really going to be rocking in there. Maybe we need a, a dual tower, single fan type thing. Or, you know, somewhere around here I've got the other version of this is dual tower, dual 140 millimeter fan. That might be a little too much. We could go with the single tower, 140 millimeter fan. But even then, eh, it's probably overkill. Uh, maybe this one, which I just put uh, a version of this in the... Uh, War Mother's uh, computer, which is, you know, pretty good. I'm not sure we need that either, though. And then there's even the, the low-profile one, which, uh, if you guys saw, it's about equivalent to uh, the cooler that Intel ships with the new i7-10700. But, you know, probably actually is a little better. Maybe it had a bad day. But reality is, this is all we need. The stock Intel... CPU cooler. So that's what we're going to go with. And uh, let's get into building. All right, folks. So I'm going to attempt to do this one-handed. Even though I don't suggest you guys do this. This is a rather expensive CPU. Um, but we're not the brightest, right? I might have four college degrees. But, uh, you know, sometimes I do stupid things. All right. So there is uh, the CPU is out. Now, with your 10th gen, uh, you see those notches that are cut out? That's going to line up right down here. You're also, other thing you're looking for, and I would try to say this in all the videos, this little triangle, there's a triangle on the motherboard. Sometimes it's not there. Sometimes you'll have to look on the other side of uh, the support mechanism that holds it in place. So we're going to gently put this in here. Now, of course, it is recommended to use electrostatic gear. Uh, this channel, you know, in the winter time, we do things differently than we do in the summer. Uh, and it is September, so we're getting closer to where it's going to be cool. Now, you know, one of the funny things I noticed the other day, Night Gen has the notches up top. So some of those people that have told me, oh, I tried to put my Night Gen in there and it didn't work. Um, yeah, hopefully you saw that right off the bat that it's not going to fit um, where you were trying to, you know, mess around with me. All right, so we need to clean this up a little bit more, as well as our CPU cooler. And then we'll get some uh, Noctua thermal paste out of there, on there, which should be better than the cheap stuff that Intel puts on. So uh, we'll start there, folks. So the other day, somebody complained because I put my Intel logo in, you know, it wasn't like this. And uh, I don't remember which computer it was, but basically the uh, the cable would not reach to... Uh, where the uh, CPU cooler uh, power connector is there, the four pin. So, you know, in this video, I think the same thing's going to happen, and I'm going to have to tilt it sideways. Um, yeah, that's not going to work. So we're going to, you know, we're going to do this. And if they watch this video, hey, I'm sorry, but uh, that's the way it goes. So I'm going to put some paste on here. Now, you know, 
they say four to five millimeters in diameter. I don't have anything to measure that, so we're just going to eyeball it. Uh, I suggest you at home make a better effort than I do. All right, so there's our Noctua paste. I actually uh, stupidly bought a big, uh, I think it's a 10 gram container of this stuff. And then I realized that I have all of these CPU coolers lying around and didn't really need it. Okay, so whether that's exactly four to five millimeters or not is another story. Now the hope is that this will spread across here evenly, right? You want a nice, uh, well, it's gonna be a nice thin thickness after you apply pressure on there, but you want it across all of here because that is uh, you know, gonna help the heat transfer between that CPU and the CPU cooler. All right, so if you're reusing your uh, CPU cooler, you wanna make sure all of the uh, notches are aimed at the actual CPU. Um, you know, some of my videos, <laughs> I uh, forget to do that, and then I have to, to f I end up fixing it on the fly in the video, um, but the truth is you should always start in this location. Now, um, basically what you're going to do is, you know, now that it's over the holes, you're going to press in. Okay, so there's one, and then I'm going to go directly across instead of doing the next one over, if it will even... Uh, so this is where you gotta make sure you're lined up, which it doesn't appear that we are, or we have a bad, uh, bad, yeah, we might have a bad one. Let me check that one out. I'll do these other two for now. Let me fix this one. All right, so this one was in the down position to start off with. There we go. So uh, sometimes that happens too if you reuse these. now. Later, if I want to remove these, I'm going to rotate them in the direction of the aerial, and then all four of them, and then it's just going to pop out. So let's go ahead and uh, put this in, and then we will uh, loop it around where the edge goes. Now it's important, you know, to make sure that your cables are clear of the fan blades. This is, uh, you know, one of the things that irks me about Intel's design for this. You'll see the new i7-10700 has... A single uh, cable that's uh, you know got uh, a protective layer on it basically it protects all uh, three of these cables or wires I should say um, so I think that's in and you know not the best looking thing but hey there's the Intel logo at an angle so there and there's slack we'll try and do something with that it looks kind of ugly all right next let's put some RAM in here so um, yeah, all I found was this 3200 megahertz RAM, which makes me wonder if I gave either my wife or son my 3600 megahertz. Either way, I'm going to have to go looking for it and uh, recollect it. But for now, we'll do 3200 megahertz. All right, folks, so this is a gigabyte motherboard. You have to uh, put both of these back in this position to put the RAM in. Okay. And... Now, you'll see in your owner manual, and you'll see also in some videos I screwed this up, but uh, basically you want to be in the second and fourth position from the CPU, okay? Which is basically, you see right here, this motherboard's nice enough to tell you this is A2 and B2 positions, okay? Now, the other thing about the RAM, you want to make sure the short side, so you have your short uh, length of connectors and a long length of connectors, your motherboard has a short side and a long side so basically you want to put match the short with the short and the long with the long okay and once we do that we check to make sure that it's indeed in the groove on both sides and we're gonna press this in usually a better idea to not do it inside of a box uh, but this will work you should hear two clicks and that means that it's in so take a look at it now, very important that your RAM be seated, okay? So you could put a, do a little tug on it and just make sure it's good. Same thing, short with the short. Now, one of the reasons they start in second and fourth, when you get one of those huge Noctua coolers or some of the other ones, uh, this enables you to, you know, get RAM clearance at least on, uh, to have uh, two sets of RAM like we have here and those clicked at the same time. So we're good with the RAM. Now folks, uh, next thing to do is disconnect what I have on the test box and uh, we'll get this one in place. 
All right, folks, so uh, we have the uh, Gigabyte Z490UD on the test box, and I shit you not, this is the test box. So um, why do I put it on the box instead of the table or, you know, in a uh, PC? Well, I do a lot of testing here, and this is just freaking easier. So uh, I got all kinds of connections to do, and uh, including, you know, our I.O. stuff. Let's go ahead and knock these out. Um, and you're probably wondering, how's this guy going to turn this on without a uh, case? We'll get to that in a moment. So um, I have a EVGA 850BQ power supply, 850 watts. It's going to be powering this. So we got that in place. And guess what, folks? We also have um, the ability to do extreme overclocking with this guy, right? But uh, in this case, we're just hoping for uh, extreme... Uh, we'll see power limits, the ability to, um, you know, have more power, basically. So let me find that connect. So my power supply has a dual rail deal for CPU, and we can put that guy in there. And now I've got one by eight and one by four. So uh, if we're able to adjust power limits, we will uh, go a little above and beyond with this setup. All right, folks, so most of you know the front panel here is uh, where you need to turn these things on with your uh, PC case. And, uh, of course, lo and behold, I have one of these front panels. But uh, on the end of, other end of it is just a uh, simple uh, power switch to turn it on. So all we have to do is find the right one. And I know from doing, you know, hundreds and hundreds of computers, uh, I don't think I've got to a 1,000 yet, but... That it's in the second row in the second set so you might be able to see it right there It'll, if you can see it right there in the very front it says pw and uh this one you know doesn't really matter uh positive negative the uh ones next to it the power led matters and if you know uh let's see reset switch doesn't matter either but the hard drive um one matters so We've got this uh, set up over here. Now, I could turn this on now, but let's go ahead and get all our other connectors going. I know this is going to work because guess what? I've done enough of these. Now, this motherboard has, uh, let's see, we might need a graphics card at some point. Um, well, we'll use the HDMI because there is no display port. So we we'll use that. Then I've got to plug in a uh, a mouse. I need a keyboard, and we've got eth Ethernet. So I just need to find one more cable. All right, so I found the uh, keyboard, and we should be good to go, folks. So I got to turn the power switch back on. Yeah, this place is a disaster. The wife is not happy with me. I left it like this when I went to Hawaii for six months, and. Uh, you know all right so let's check our fan make sure there's nothing in the way and we're gonna hit the power button nothing so what did I do wrong folks something's wrong now I'm gonna figure it out okay folks so um we having a little problem obviously I did something wrong over here I think because I've got this headset plugged in and so there's definitely power going across the motherboard and uh, so I'm going to try a different switch uh, than the one I have. Whoop. So actually the switch was good. I just didn't press it in far enough. Um, so it's on now. And hopefully the easy debug uh, will shut off. Still on though. All right. So over here, uh, we are in BIOS. And... Uh, Either we do not have an operating system on that drive, or uh, we don't have an operating system on a drive. So, uh, one of two options. I'm going to uh, have to put a different M.2 on here so we can fire it up. Because I do not believe that... Uh, I'm, I'm using the wrong mouse. I need to use the other one. I don't believe that... Uh, the OS is on here, so 
That's just the way it goes. All right, so I grabbed a uh, EVO 960 Pro, which, uh, you know, may actually perform even better than uh, the 970. So let's fire this thing up and hope uh, we get some action over on the other screen. All right, folks, so guess what? It booted Windows. Now I'm going to switch over. I'm going to put the uh, headset on, and we're going to go to the screen recorder so I can do the rest of this. And we're going to uh, see what we can get for uh, numbers out of this thing. We'll probably put a graphics card in at some point. But uh, I'm hoping for a lot better performance than what, than what we've seen so far with it.